the state that we love so very much? The state where the blue wall crumbled in 2016 and the red wave will begin in 2018. And I want to thank you all for being out today. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. Michigan and America need John James in the United States Senate from the great state of Michigan. John, thank you for those great words. Thank you for your inspiring example. Thank you for your wonderful family. I know that I know that Liz is here with us as well. Where is Liz James hanging out? Give Liz a round of applause. to be with both of you and uh, great to be here with uh, the chairman of the Michigan Republican Party, Ambassador Ron Weiser. Thank you so much, Mr. Ambassador, for your great leadership. And I also am so honored, and I know John James is as well, that we're also joined today by the next great Republican right. governor of the state of Michigan, Bill Schuette. Because, uh, because John James is a special man with a special story and has a unique ability to bring leadership, leadership and a, and a renewed vision to the United States Senate. And I'm not the only one who thinks it. On my way here this morning, I was talking to a friend of mine. And so let me begin today by bringing greetings and the full and complete endorsement of John James for the Senate from the 45th President of the United States. The president and I were talking and the President said to me, that John James, he's the real deal. And I'll tell you what, I think you all have already figured it out. Michigan has figured it out. People across America are figuring it out. John James is going to be elected as your next president. It's going to happen because of who he is. It's going to happen because of the progress we've made as a nation, and it's going to happen because of the choice that we face. First and foremost, it's about who he is. And really and truly, men and women, this is an extraordinary individual. To know John James is to know someone, despite his humility and character really embodies everything that's best about this country. He'll be a servant leader in Washington, D.C. You know, I, I have to tell you, there, I was told many years ago, there's two kinds of, two kinds of people in Washington, D.C. There's people that are driven, and there's people that are called. And to know this man for five minutes is to know John James is a man who has answered the call to serve his nation, to serve his family, to serve this country, and he's following that call to our nation's capital. <laughs> think, about think about it. He steps up at the age of 17. He left home for West Point, graduated, deployed for combat during Operation Iraqi Freedom, logged more than 750 hours. In an Apache attack helicopter, came back with medals on his chest, went right to work. Right to work in his family's business. In fact, I know his dad, John, is here. In fact, uh, give his dad a round of applause. I got a feeling. Thank you so much, Mr. James, and congratulations to you and your family on such an extraordinary story. Your son told me about Air Force Two when we connected up at the airport. He said, my dad gave me everything except an excuse for failure. <laughs> That's a great dad in the back of the room. Thank you so much. <laughs> John came home, took over the control of the James Group International, was in good hands. He expanded that company. In fact, it saw their sales grow by nearly 400%. He's a doer. He's a builder. But he's also a man that has a a foundation of faith and family that represents the very best of the Midwest and the very best of America. Dedicated to his wonderful wife, their two, what he calls extremely energetic young boys, <laughs> with another one on the way 
uh, but he is a man of profound faith, and I have to tell you, uh, for all the other aspects of this race, for everything that's happening in the country, for the choice that you face, the people of Michigan must send John James to the United States Senate. Just for the because we've made great progress in the last year and a half. I mean, I gotta tell you, I'll never forget, John, when the, when the president called me up. The official call that I got when I was governor of Indiana, just to the south of here, and I was told that I was gonna get a phone call about 11 o'clock at night. True story. My wife and I had prayed all the way through it. We knew we'd say yes in a heartbeat if we were asked to join this team and join this ticket. I'll never forget the phone rang, 11 o'clock, I picked it up put it to my ear, and I heard that very familiar voice. <laughs> and he said, Mike, it's going to be great. <laughs> he said, I mean, we're going to have to work, but he said, you know what, we're going to rebuild our military, we're going to get this economy moving again, America's going to be standing tall again. And he goes, we're going to just go forward. And I looked at it, I said to him on the phone when he took a breath, I said, I said, well, if there's a question in there, the answer is yes. <laughs> and he said, yes, of course, no, let's go, we're going to go do it. And you know what, he's been right. Every single day, President Donald Trump is making America great again. Think about what we've done. This guy has worn the uniform of the United States. I know how grateful he is. And this president actually recently signed the largest increase in our national defense since the days of Ronald Reagan. We're rebuilding our military. This veteran standing next to me knows that we're also providing for our veterans. President Trump signed historic legislation in the first year in office that created new accountability so we could hold those who are providing health care to our veterans to the highest possible standard, and we're giving veterans access to real-time, world-class health care that they earned in the uniform of the United States of America with Veterans Choice. Also, beyond that, we've been standing with law enforcement, we've been securing our borders, making historic investments, historic investments in border security. We've already started to build that wall with more on the way. And particularly important in the United States Senate, something that's of crucial importance in this race. This president has seen confirmed uh, more court of appeals judges than any president in American history. And that doesn't even count Justice Neil Gorsuch or the next great justice on the Supreme Court of the United States, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. And the reason we need the reason we need John James in the United States Senate has to do with our military. It has to do with security at home and abroad. It has to do with those all-important appointments to our courts at every level that are confirmed in the United States Senate. But it's this growing economy that brings me here today. The truth of the matter is, thanks to the support that we've enjoyed with Republican majorities in the House and the Senate, and with widening support on Capitol Hill growing right before our eyes, jobs are coming back. Confidence is back from Michigan to all across America. America is back, but we're just getting started. That's why we need to in the United States Senate. I mean, this president from early on took decisive action to roll back the heavy hand of the federal government. President Trump has signed more bills rolling back federal red tape than any president in American history. We've managed to unleash American energy as never before. And what John was just talking about, we just announced a new trade agreement between the United States and Mexico that will put American jobs, American workers, and the American automotive industry first. I mean, the truth is, I don't have to tell people in Michigan not too far from Motor City, how much, how much impact NAFTA had on jobs all across the heartland, back in my home state of Indiana and here in the state of Michigan. And I watched him, this president stood firm 
drove a hard bargain with Mexico, and I'll tell you, we already, as of yesterday, have renewed negotiations with Canada, and I promise you, when all, when all the negotiations are said and done, Michigan and America are going to start winning on jobs and growth as never before. Christmas last year when he signed the largest tax cuts and tax reform in American history. It was all possible because of Republican majorities in the Congress of the United States. But if you didn't notice in the United States Senate, those are pretty, pretty narrow numbers. That's why we need John James on Capitol Hill, because for all that we have done, the truth is, Michigan, we're just getting started. We're going to continue to invest in stronger, more positive America, but we need strong partners on Capitol Hill to get it done. So it's all, about, it's all about what we've done, and the results really speak for themselves. I mean, to see this growing economy, literally nearly four million good-paying jobs created since Election Day 2016, and the lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for African Americans <laughs> in this country. We're talking about the American dream. The truth is the American dream is coming back. The American dream is coming back for every American, from every walk of life and every background. And we're deeply committed to continuing to build on it. But the truth is that uh, this economy's growth, I think, has been a surprise to an awful lot of problems. You know, for the last 16 years, the most powerful economy in the history of the world only grew by an average of 2%. And I'll never forget the day, it was in September of 2016, that I accompanied our candidate, our candidate to New York City, to what was called the Economic Club of New York. And we were backstage, John, behind a lot of one of these blue curtains. And he was looking over his speech. And in the speech, the text read that, we're going to cut regulation, we're going to cut taxes, we're going to unleash American energy, we're going to fight for American jobs and better and fairer trade deals. And he goes, I believe, in the speech it said, I believe that we'll achieve a growth of 3% in this economy. And he looked at the speech writers and the experts and he goes, well, I think it's going to be a lot more than that. <laughs> they said, well, no, we... We do too, we could, we really could, but we really, it's a true story. They said, but maybe we'll go with three, and we'll send three today, and then maybe, you know, we'll do better than that. He goes, no, I think it's really going to be more than that. And they said, no, so we walked out on the stage. And you can go to YouTube and look at it. I was sitting there right next to him, all these, you know, all these important financial people from New York City and a really impressive crowd. And he stood up and he said, we're going to cut taxes, we're going to roll back regulation, we're going to unleash American energy. And he said, and I'm establishing a national goal of 4% economic growth in the United States of America. He didn't point me backstage and said, now they didn't want me to tell you that. <laughs> he said, I think it's going to be 4%. I think it's going to be even more than that. And here we are today, our first year in office, average roughly 3% economic growth, and in the second quarter, 4.1% economic growth in America. I mean, we've been delivering, folks. You look at this administration, Republican majorities in Congress have been promises made and promises kept. But I promise you, we're just getting started. The truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, we've got a lot more work to do. We've already begun negotiations and discussions on Capitol Hill for another round of tax cuts. We're looking at rolling back more federal regulation. We're looking at making more investments in infrastructure and the things that will really provide and support for a growing American economy. But this election really is about a choice. It's a choice about whether we're gonna have renewed Republican majorities, larger Republican majorities in the United States Senate, or whether we're gonna to continue to run, in, run into the kind of obstruction that has literally set historic records. I mean, it's amazing to think, it's amazing to think of the level of obstruction that Democrats, particularly in the United States Senate, have exercised against this administration. I mean, there have been more filibusters called by the Democrat minority in the United States Senate by a factor of four times 
than were called in any of the last three administrations by the minority in the Senate. I mean, not to be overly technical, but I mean, their entire agenda is resist and obstruct. But we need John James in a larger Republican majority in the Senate because our motto is results and growth for the American people. choices made. You know, elections are ultimately about choices. And the truth of the matter is, uh, John James, he gets to Washington, D.C., I know he's going he's gonna to fight for Michigan, going to fight for Michigan's jobs and values each and every day. You've seen his record, you've seen where he's standing. He's standing for the principles of limited government, Second Amendment, the right to life, pro-growth policy. He's going to stand with our administration's vision for growth, but your Senator Debbie Stabenow has been standing in the way of our agenda, and you need to hear about it. The truth is, when the time came to cut your taxes, Senator Debbie Stabenow voted no. When the time came to, to stand up for cities and defund, stand up for law and order and defund sanctuary cities, right? <coughs> Debbie Stabenow voted no. When the time came to give states like Michigan the ability to to defund the largest abortion provider in America, Debbie Stabenow voted no. And when it came time to confirm Justice Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, your senator voted no, and Debbie Stabenow has already announced that she'll vote no on Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Men and women, Michigan deserves better. Michigan deserves John James. got a campaign to run. I think 69 days, but who's counting? Right? <laughs> yes, sir. But I know you all are going to put your head down. Thank you for your generosity today, but I hope you leave here today. I hope you leave here today with a little bit of a burden on your hearts. You all have been tremendously generous. This has been a tremendously successful campaign. But the truth is, truth is, uh, for these midterm elections, even when you have a candidate of the caliber and the quality of John James, you know, the historical trends are that it's, uh, it's challenging for the party that's in the White House in those first midterm elections. That's the truth, okay? I mean, the, the conventional wisdom is that this would be a challenging year for our party and even the best of our candidates. But I think we all know what President Donald Trump thinks of conventional wisdom. <laughs> we made history in 26 in Michigan, and we're going to make history again in 2018. It's going to take all of us to do it, so I want you to do a couple of things. Number one, make plans to vote. And remember, friends don't let friends vote alone. <laughs> we make some plans as soon as the law allows here in the state of Michigan. If you can vote early, vote absentee, get ready on election day. Get it out of the way early if you can so you can be out on election day working to turn your neighbors into friends. Now. Secondly, I hope you leave here today and just go tell somebody. You know, I'll, I'll always believe when I look at 2016, when I look at any election in my lifetime, you know, it's... I'm absolutely convinced the most powerful media in America is not, you know, the TV shows and the talking heads, it's not the internet, it's not social media. I think the most powerful media in America is when one American hears from another American who they respect about an issue that's important to them, to their community, their state, and their nation. So leave here today and go tell somebody about John James and why we need John James in the United States. the other day. <laughs> I can tell how excited he is about John James. And this opportunity that we have to elect a man of character, integrity, a proven leader with, with experience to Washington, D.C. Just go tell somebody. Every day, every one of these 69 days between now and election day. And one other thing I'd encourage you to do if you're ever mind, And that is to remember to Bow the head and bend the knee. For this American and 
every American is rolling their sleeves up to make this country great. I mean, I really do believe, I really do believe in the power of prayer. It's one of the, it's one of the things that John James and I bonded on early. And when I talked to him at that unity event, he told me how he woke up the morning of the election day. It was competitive primary, the good people in that race. Michigan's always competitive. And he just said he just got up that morning and just put it in God's hands. So I encourage you to remember this good man in your prayers. And while you're praying, just remember America. So I truly do believe, I truly do believe that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, he'll do like he's always done to long and story history of this country. He'll hear from heaven. And he'll heal this land, Amen. this one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for him. And I gotta tell you, it's great to be with you today. Thank you all for coming out. Thanks for coming out to support this good man and his good family. I leave here today more encouraged than ever. That with your continued support. With John James in the United States Senate in renewed Republican majorities, with President Donald Trump in the White House, and with God's help, we will make America safe again. We will make Michigan and America prosperous like never before. And to borrow a phrase, we will keep making America great again. Thank you very much.